My mother and father came from Mexico. My mother came when she was 11 years old. My father came when he was about seven. They came without family. I mean, they came to search for a future in this country. My mother came with such pride of Mexico. Mexican is such a beautiful word, and yet where we grew up, it was always derogatory. I never heard the word Mexican used in a positive sense when I grew up. Mexicans steal cars, Mexicans are dumb, Mexicans don't go to school, Mexicans don't do this. So that's the time period in which I grew up. Not that it's changed that much. So there was a conflict right there. Now my mother is very strong, and she'd say you have to go to Mexico to really appreciate who you are. And then when I was 13 years old, we did go to Mexico. And in Mexico, they called me a gringo, okay? They called me, you're an American. So it was sort of neither land. I wasn't American, I wasn't Mexican. I learned very quickly to defend that by saying, yes, I'm both, and I choose the best of each. So growing up, we were poor. My father worked hard, my mother worked hard, there were five of us. I had a twin brother, Bobby, two sisters, and then a much younger brother. But life was so good for us. Our home life was so good. We didn't know we were poor. My childhood was outstanding. My mother was attentive. My mother was encouraging. My mother made all of us believe that you could do whatever you wanted if you were educated and if you tried. I was clearly the best in math in my school. Now, it wasn't a great school, but it was a school, and I was the best. But a lot of people didn't want to accept that. And in fact, I'll tell you something that really stays with me all my life, is that I think in the 10th grade, the American Math Society had a contest for all the high school kids and at, at, at my high school. I won it, and it was supposed to be that they would present you the award in an assembly, and the principal would come up and say, you know, you won this award. And when I won it, they didn't have the assembly. See, they didn't have the assembly. I went to the principal's office and they gave it to me. See, and that stays with me forever and ever and ever, that they didn't want to brag about me winning that award. In those days, they didn't want this Mexican to be the best student in math in the school. And that's because of the area that I grew up in, where everybody looked down at Mexicans. And then it carried into social activity, you know, the parties, who invited, and stuff like that. So my brother and I just said, forget that, and we started racing cars. But in some sense, that was an outlet. That was a running away from dealing with the social aspects and the other aspects. But because we were so good in cars, everybody respected that. My wife, Jean, she's New Yorkan. Okay, her parents were from Puerto Rico. She was born in New York. And we met, and we started dating. She was 15. And when we got married, she was 17. I was 19. I was a student at UCLA. Then we had a daughter, Cersei, a year later. And so I had a daughter when I was a junior. And then in graduate school, I had a son, Richard. And Jean was a dancer. She had studied in New York City Ballet. And I was going to be this mathematician. And things went well. We were going to conquer the world. My first position was in Wisconsin. We rented a house, and then we get a letter saying, no, we can't rent the house. They found out we were Mexican. They took away the house. And then when we got there, they were very, you know, trying to help us, and we got another house. Then the neighbors would tell my daughter, who was kind of dark, they'd say, oh, you little black kid. And Cersei would come to me, and she'd, Dad, am I black? And I said, no, Cersei, you're not. They don't know how to call you Mexican, so you're black to them. Always I've had to defend myself, and always I've had to put my head real high, even professionally, and say, you're not going to put me down. I'm good, I'm as good as you, and I'll show you. I was the first Hispanic elected to the National Academy of Engineering. I was appointed by Bill Clinton to the National Science Board. I'm a university professor at Rice University. There's only been five in the history. So they can say what they want, but I can look at them and say, my credentials speak for themselves. I don't have to speak. Maybe my mother taught me that, maybe I taught that. But I learned if you carry with excellence, they can't cut you back. I went to Rice, I went to Wisconsin, actually I was at Stanford, and 
Professionally, things were fine. The family things were fine. Then there was a series of three things that, that kind of happened. First gene was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So here's a dancer who her whole life is exercise and she can no longer walk. Then you have a myasthenia gravis, which just added to the multiple sclerosis. But then the third strike that came in 1982 was our daughter was killed. Okay? She was killed in an automobile accident. So the hardest thing in our life has been to deal with the death of Cersei. Gene would say, multiple sclerosis is nothing compared to the death of the daughter. She says, I'll take it a hundred times. So there's not a day comes forward where we don't deal with the death of the firstborn, where we don't deal where Gene is living out of a wheelchair. I can list a whole bunch of firsts and a whole bunch of successes on this side, and I can put, you know, failures and adversity on this side. I don't ever get so cocky that I think, you know, that everything in the world is just great. I'm always brought back to reality by balancing the two components, and my wife's the same way. I can tell you that I do enjoy winning awards. I would lie if I say I didn't like that. But I really get a better satisfaction out of helping people that I think not anybody could help, okay? I'm unique in helping that particular person. I have, you know, personal discussions with a student who's having problems on any issue. And it doesn't matter if it's male or female or white or black or brown. I just say, you're having a problem. Let's talk about this thing. I go towards situations where most people run away from. That's my culture. My culture is to reach and to help and to include. Next semester I'll be teaching Chicano studies, okay? And I will talk about the 60s and the 70s and I will show today's students what the movement was about and how the pride evolved. And so I don't mind using the word because it still signifies something that was really prominent in a certain era, okay? And it isn't, oh, but that time is gone. And in fact, after last year I taught this course, many of the students came up to me, so-called Hispanic or Mexican-American, and they said, you taught us how to be proud of who we are. I'm no longer bothered by using the word Chicano. So I have a defense, and I built it a long time ago. I said, I know who I am, and I like who I am, and this is where I want to be.